Get to know stories of conversion and faith. Makinig sa Giya sa Pagtuo with your host, Brother Al Barreto. Thursdays, 7 to 8 in the evening, only here at 89.9 Spirit FM. Brought to you by Car Asia Incorporated gives that extra touch of care beyond service as it celebrates its road to 40 this year. Here now is Brother Al Barreto. Good evening, sisters and brothers. Babalikan po natin ang pagtatalakay sa Mahal na Birhen ng nakaraang episode na La Pieta at ang Our Lady of Guadalupe. Hirap kasing iwanan kung mayroon pa tayong may babahaging mga mensahe para sa napakaraming mga deboto ni Santa Maria na katulad ko. Bagaman tukoy na ang susunod na pagsang pag-aaralan natin at ito ay tungkol sa kasaysayan ng simbahang katoliko, abangan po natin sa susunod na pagtatanghal ng landas ng buhay sa ilalim ng giya sa pagtuo. Gayon paman, may maraming bagay at detalye akong nalaktawan sa nakaraang episode. Pero bago ang lahat, pakilagay muna natin ang ating malayang diwa at damdamin sa presensya ng Diyos para sa opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Holy and Eternal Father, God of holiness and of grace, we implore you to bless our country and the world that you love so dearly, to a world that searches your lamp that shines, to a world that is hungry, you are food that sustains, to a world that suffers, you are hope of endurance, to a world that's broken, You are one who restores. To a world full of hate, You are love that forgives. To a world that denies, You are truth to be proclaimed. God of wholeness and of grace, Help build our nation closer to Your kingdom of peace, justice, truth, equality, faith, hope, and love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Jude, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Samantala, narito muna ang isang paborito kong awit para kay Mama Mary na pinamagatang Inang Mahal. Mula ito sa Hangad Musical Ensemble.
Ang obra ni Michael Angelo na La Pieta ay nililok sa isang buong bloke ng Carrara Marble. Itinuturing ito ng iskultor na pinakaperpektong bloke na ginamit niya. Makikita rin naman sa resulta ng kakinisan at kakaibang kintag ng mukha ni Mama Mary. In fact, Naging issue ito sa mga nag observang kritiko ng sining dahil napakabata raw ang mukha ni Mama Mary para maging ina ng isang 33 taong gulang na anak na si Kristo Jesus. Ang paliwanag naman ni Michelangelo sa pagpunang ito ay natural lamang ito sa mga babaeng malinis ang kalooban at wala ni katiting na bahid ng kasalanan. Sa madalit salita, bukod tangi siyang pinagpala sa lahat ng mga babae sa balat ng lupa na puno ng grasya. Ang eksena ng Lapieta ay naglalarawan sa mahal na Birhing Maria. Karga ang patay na katawa ni Kristo pagkatapos ipanaog sa krus bago siya tuluyang ilagay sa libingan. Bukod sa nilalarawan nito ang ikalabing tatlo ng Stations of the Cross, isa rin ito sa mga pangunahing kaganapan mula sa buhay ng mahal na birhin na kilala bilang pitong kapighatian ni Maria na naging paksa ng mga panalanging debosyonal ng mga Katoliko. Ito ay isang espesyal na likha ng sining sa panahon ng Renaissance or the Revival of Art and Literature under the influence of classical models noong 14 hanggang 16 centuries. Dahil sa panahon iyon, bibihira ang ganoong multi-figured sculpture na may dalawang magkasamang modelong inukit upang palitawin ang isang komposisyon na may hugis, piramid o triangulo. Bagay na pinaburan din ng ibang mga artistang pintor na katulad ni Leonardo da Vinci, ang sikat na pintor ng Mona Lisa. Sa isang masusing pagsusuri ng bawat daloy at sukat ng dalawang banal na modelo, namely, ang mahal na birhin at ang kanyang anak na si Kristo Yesus. Kapansin-pansin ang tamang proporsyon ng kanilang mga ulo. Subalit, ang katawan ng birhin ay mas malaki kesa sa anak. Dahilan ito sa mga kritiko na mag-usisa o alamin kung ano ang naging dahilan ng batikang iskultor na palitawin ang ganoong disenyo. Kung susukatin mo ng nakatayo ang mahal na ina kumpara sa anak, di hamak na mas malaki at mataas si Santa Maria. Ang naging espekulasyon ay maring sinadya ito ni Michelangelo dahil kinailangan suportahan ng mahal na birhin ang kanyang anak sa kandungan at kung ang kanyang katawan ay mas maliit, maaring hindi ito magiging akma sa tamang balanse para maipakita ang banayat na daloy sa kabuuan ng anyo. Isang dahilan rin ito kung bakit tinipon at ginusot ni Michelangelo ang kasuutan ng mahal na birhen para magmukhang mas lumaki ang itsura. Isa pang karagdagang talento ni Michelangelo sa paglalarawan niya sa kasagdalan ng katawa ni Kristo, ang kanang kamay ng mahal na birhin ay hindi direktang nakahawak sa katawan ng anak. Bagkos, ito ay natatakpan ng kanyang balabal bago dumampi sa tagiliran ni Kristo. Nagpapahiwatig lang ito na ganyang kabanal ang sagradong katawa ni Kristo. Needless to say na ganoon rin dapat nating ituring ang banal na ostiya tuwing tayo ay tatanggap 
sa panahon ng komunyon. Ang marmol na damit ay nagmukhang natural na tela dahil nga sa mga gusot at malalalim na pilo. Habang natutugunan naman niya ang isang praktikal na layunin na maihatid naman ang ninanais na mensahe sa ngalan ng simbahang katoliko. Pero, para sa mga komposer ng awit na Pieta o Yayi sa paanan ni Jesus na sina ginoong Paulo, Tirol at MJ Francia na siyang sumulat ng liriko, malamang na nasisilayan nila ang damdamin ng mahal na ina na ginugunita ang nakaraang panahon habang si Kristo ay sanggol pa. Kaya nakapikit ito na inihehele at dinuduyan sa kanyang kandungan. Kaya angkop itong susunod na awit ng mahal na birhin sa kanyang anak na pinamagatang Perfect Love.
Tayo po ay tutuloy na sa ikalawang paksa, ang Our Lady of Guadalupe. Alam niyo ba mga kapatid na ang kasaysayan ng Our Lady of Guadalupe ay nagsimula pa kay San Lucas? Tignan mo nga naman, kung di pa ako nag-scan sa YouTube, ba'y nakalimutan ko na itong napakahalagang bahagi ng kanyang kasaysayan? Ganyan talaga si Lord kung mag-alalay. Akalain mong bigla na lang tumambad sa akin ang vlog ng isang Amerikanong mga ngaral na si San Lucas ang unang nag-ukit ng estatwa ni Santa Maria. And then later on, pinangalanan ring Our Lady of Guadalupe. Nangyari ito habang pinanunood ko ang tungkol sa kalagayan ng Ukraine at Russian War. Ang bait-bait talaga ni Lord, ano? At syempre, si Mama Mary rin, ano? Anyway, may isang artikulo si ginoong Glenn Valois ng The Good Shepherd Catholic Church and School na nilathala noong Disyembre 9, 2021. At ito'y pinamagatang, Did you know the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe is believed to have started with a statue carved by the evangelist St. Luke? Isang mahalagang Marian shrine sa panahon ng medieval kingdom of Castile na ngayon ay bansa ng Espanya. Dito naka-enthrone ang rebulto ng Our Lady sa monasteryo ng Santa Maria de Guadalupe, lalawigan ng Cáceres, Extremadura, bahagi ng Kanlurang, Espanya. Itong orihinal na Our Lady of Guadalupe ay isa sa tatlong Black Madonna ng Espanya. Ang rebulto ay formal na kinorunahan noong Oktubre 12, 1928 ni Pope Pius XI sa presensya ng Haring Alfonso XIII. It should not be confused with Our Lady of Guadalupe na nakadambana sa Basilika ng Guadalupe, Mexico. Subalit siya pa rin ang nag-iisang ina ni Kristo. Ancient tradition records that look In his compiling of eyewitness testimonies for his gospel, interviewed Mary on many occasions. At habang siya ay nagtatanong kay Mama Mary, sabay naman niyang inuukit ang maamong larawan ng mahal na birhen. At ito na nga yung estatwa na inilagay sa tabi ni San Lucas nang siya ay pumanaw. Pagkaraan ng maraming taon, ang kanyang kabaong ay inilipat mula sa Gresya patungo sa Constantinople at ang estatwa ay inalis doon at ibinigay kay Emperador Constantius II at kay Macedonius na isang ubispo. More than 200 years later, the Byzantine Emperor Morris gifted the statue to Gregorius Anisius, the Pope's ambassador and the future Pope Gregory the Great in Rome. When he became Pope, he paraded the statue around the streets in order to battle a recent epidemic. An angel appeared as a result, and the plague ended. Furthermore, nais ipakita ng Diyos ang kahalagahan ng kanyang plano. Ang basilika kung saan naka-enthrone ang estatwa ay ipinatayo sa utos ng isang nakaraang aparisyon na naganap noong August 5, 352 AD. At siya ang Our Lady of the Snows. It truly shows how much time God's plans take to unfold as one event that leads to a chain of events barring time and space that leads to the apparitions in Mexico. The statue would remain in the Basilica's high altar for over a century until it had to be hidden by the clerics due to the Islamic invasion of Spain in 712 AD. 
This statue was brought to Extremadura, burying it deep in a cave, not to be seen again until 600 years later. Samantala, noong unang bahagi ng ikalabing apat na siglo, si Hill Cordero, isang manggagawa, ay binisita ng mahal na birhen habang hinahanap niya ang nawawalang hayop sa kabundukan. Isinalaysay ni Cordero ang nangyaring aparisyon. Inutusan raw siya ng mahal na birhen na hilingin ang mga kaparian na maghukay doon sa lugar kung saan siya nagpakita. At hindi nga sila nagkamali dahil dito pala nila matutuklasan ang isang bagay na matagal nang nawawala. At ito nga yung sagradong rebulto na inukit mismo ni San Lucas na may mahigit na anim na raang taon nang hinahanap. In time, a small shrine was built on the spot which became the great St. Mary of Guadalupe Monastery. Ang maliit na estatwa ng Guadalupe ay inukit mula sa kahoy na sedro at mahigit na dalawang talampakan ang taas. Isa itong Black Madonna na kilala bilang Sedes Sepientie o Throne of Wisdom kung saan nakaupo ang Batang Kristo sa kandungan ng ina. Ang estatwa ay binihisan ng gintong naka-embossed na damit mula noong second half ng ikalabing apat na siglo. Balot po ito maliban sa mukha at kamay na nakalitaw. Ang magarbong damit na isinusuot ng rebulto ay sinadya upang i-highlight ang karunungan at kapangyarihan ng kanyang pinagmulan. At para bagang inuulit ang mga katagang nakasulat sa The Magnificat ng Mahal na Birhen, quote, God has looked with favor on the lowliness of His servant. San Lucas, Kabanata 1, 46-49 Our Lady of Guadalupe crosses time and space with the goal of bringing all peoples to her son. Siya ang tulay at pagitan ng magkakaibang lahi, wika at kultura na nagpapaalala sa atin na may kaukulang dignidad ang lahat ng nilalang. Mayaman o mahirap, may kapangyarihan o wala. Ang kasaysayan ng Our Lady of Guadalupe ng Espanya ay bahagi lang sa kadakilaan ng mahal na ina na nagpakita kay San Juan Diego sa burol ng Tepeyac noong 1530. Sa homily ni Pope John Paul II, Enero ng taong 1999, nang siya ay bumisita sa Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mexico City, na sabi niyang, quote, The conversion of 10 million souls in such a short time remains the largest evangelizing event in human history. Its influence greatly overflows the boundaries of Mexico, spreading to the whole continent. America, which historically is a melting pot of peoples, has recognized in the mestiza face of the Virgin of Tepeyac. The Blessed Mary of Guadalupe, an impressive example of a perfectly inculturated evangelization. End of quote. Samantala, bago tayo magpatuloy, narito ang isang awit na pinamagatang Song to Our Lady of Guadalupe by Annie Carto. You know 
to the sun of the Father All of my lifetime I'll walk beside you Maria, oh most merciful Mother Gentle Virgin with the name Sa bahaging ito, nais kong pag-ukulan ng mas detalyadong kasaysayan ng Our Lady of Guadalupe ng Mexico. Ito ay mula sa pag-uulat ni Ginoong Hernan Cortes na sinulat ni Emmanuel Liutze. Mula 1300 hanggang 1521, nanatiling naging ibabaw ang kulturang Aztec at puwersa ng kanilang relihiyon. Sa paglipas ng panahon, ito ay naging isang ganap na imperyo dahil sinakop na nila ang mga karatig lungsod. Kahit papaano, na paunlad nila ang kanilang lipunan. Dahil bihasa naman sila sa agrikultura, ang kanilang militar ay may sapat na pwersa para protektahan ang estado. Dahil dito, Lumawak ang kanilang imperyo sa pakikipag-alyansa sa iba't ibang estado. The architecture of the Aztec Empire, along with its artwork, was magnificent, especially the massive stone structures and pyramids. Even the Spaniards were impressed by them. Their religion, however, did not match the sophistication of their empire and was instead quite barbaric. Marami silang sinasamba. Kadalasan, nakabatay ito sa kalikasan. Tulad ng araw, buwan, bituin, at mga Diyos ng panahon. Kasama ang mga Diyos na nakabase sa hayo. Isa sa pinakamahalagang Diyos-Diyosa nila ay si Quetzalcoatl. Isang may balahibo na ahas. Ipinagdiriwang nila ito tuwing kapistahan. May malaking piging at ritual na kasama. The most notorious ritual was the human sacrifice. Ito ang pinaniniwalaan nilang makakapagpasaya sa nasabing Diyos-Diyosan and will result to greater harvest and peace for the people. Kakaiba, no? Baligtad. Gagawa ka ng masama tapos umaasa kang magkakaroon ng kabutihan? This ceremony calls for the priest to cut open the body of the victims and rip their hearts out, decapitating them and throwing their bodies down from top of the pyramids, offering their hearts as sacrifice to their gods. And then, cannibalism also followed as they believed that the flesh of the sacrificed victims was the flesh of their gods. Lastly, the remains of the victims were displayed on racks of skulls, one of the largest ones recorded more than 130,000 skulls. Bagaman mahirap malaman kung Gaano karami ang nagiging biktima, pero ayon sa mga iskolar ng kasaysayan, ito ay nasa pagitan ng 20,000 hanggang uh, 250,000 na katao bawat taon. Nang dumating ang mga conquistador sa lupain ng Mexico, ganito na kabrutal ang kanilang natakpuan. Katunayan, marami sa mga Kastila ang naging biktima rin sa ganitong pagsasakripisyo. 
ang kultura ng mga Aztec ay marahas at ang tanging paraan lamang na maaaring makakapagbago sa ganoong sistema ay ang makapangyarihang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng maawaing ina and that is Our Lady of Guadalupe. She brought peace between the two warring factions. Not by might, but by means of gentle persuasion that ended the human sacrificial orgy of the Aztecs and offered the natives eternal life, a Savior which had already done the sacrificing for them, His own sacrifice on the cross. Again, here is a song that will bring peace and joy to our world. Mula ito kay Israel Kamaka Vivo Ole. Ang pamagat ay Over the Rainbow and What a Wonderful World Medley. What a wonderful world, the 
wish upon a star Wake up with the clouds all far behind Me will travel melts like a lemon drops High above the chimney top that's where You'll find me, oh Somewhere over the rainbow Way up high And the dream that you dare to Why, oh why can't I Para sa ating huling bahagi, tatalakay natin ang mga detalye tungkol sa imahe ng Our Lady of Guadalupe ng Mexico. Una, ang medalyon na may krus sa gitna. Suot niya ito na parang quintas. It is an admirable and simple way of showing her consecration to Jesus, her son. The indigenous people understood that this medalyon reflected a consecration, which in the image of Holy Mary of Guadalupe was proof of the authenticity and reality of the only true and living God in an enculturation of the scripture. Ikalawa, ang anghel, as part of the image, at the Virgin's feet, an angel with the face of a child and a partial boldness indicating old age. His wings are not those of a dove but of an eagle with three colors, a bluish green, ivory white, and finally red. This angel is called the Virgin of Guadalupe's angel. Ikatlo, the black ribbon above her womb indicating that she is a woman anticipating the birth of God's only Son. In fact, the Spanish expression for pregnant is encinta, or literally, adorned with ribbon. As such, the Guadalupe event is an enculturated encounter that relies heavily on oral tradition, which in turn, reveals historical traits in a very special way. Ikaapat, the four-petal jasmine flower placed over her womb. It is also central to understanding that the woman is a virgin, likewise the mother of the one true God. For the native Indians, the design of this four-petal jasmine flower had many interrelated meanings. Cosmologically, it symbolized the four directions of the universe, north, south, east, and west. For the Indians, this design symbolized their highest deity, and the name is Ometeotel. Ikalima, our Lady's Mantel Juan Diego describes her clothing was shining like the sun. This directly reflects the words of St. John in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 1. Quote, A great sign appeared in the sky. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. End quote. Pero ang imahe ng mga bituin ang mas nais kong pagtuunan ng pansin. Bukod sa kanyang suot na koronang may labindalawang bituin, suot rin niya ang balabal na may mga bituin. In the 1990s, a Mexican astronomer named Juan Hernandez Iliescas 
conducted a series of studies on the configuration of the stars on the turquoise blue mantle of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Through computer technology, he was able to map out the constellations the very night of Our Lady's appearance. What he found was a convergence of astronomical marvels that defies belief. For example, the 46 stars visible on Guadalupe's mantle are the exact representation of the constellations on the night sky over Mexico on December 12 of 1531. At that time, Mexico was still using the old Julian calendar, which was 10 days off from the modern calendar. That places her appearance on the morning of the 22nd of December, the winter solstice, which is the longest night of the year. After the solstice, the daylight grows longer. Our Lady appeared at dawn that day, bringing the dawn from on high, Christ Himself, and signaling an end to the darkness of paganism. As we view the tilma, the constellations of the northern sky appear on the right side of her mantle, while the southern constellations appear on the left. The configuration of the various constellations in the night sky tells another story. The blue mantle represents the heavenly sky, as if Our Lady were wrapped in an array of stars. If the tilma were to be open to its fullness, we would see all the constellations at once. Some of the folds of her garment obscure the full view, and a few others wrap around her back. Visible constellations are as follows. Leo, the lion over her womb. Revelations chapter 5 verse 5. Leo's main star is called Regulus, which means little king or the Christ child. Sino ang leon ng tribo ng Huda? Di ba si Kristo? Ang sunod ay Corona Borealis, the northern crown over her temple or forehead. She does indeed wear a crown of 12 stars. Revelations chapter 12 verse 1. Ang sunod ay Virgo, the virgin, over her pure heart. Na nagpapahiwatik na siya ay isang berhin. Gemini, the twins over her knees or lap, often called the seat of wisdom dahil sa kandungan niya nakaupo ang batang si Kristo Jesus madalas. Ang sunod ay Orion, the warrior or hunter over the angel below. Some say the angel represents the great warrior Prince of the Heavenly Host, St. Michael. Isa pang kamangha-mangha ay ang mga mata ng mahal na ina. It has the refractory characteristics of human eyes. When examined through a microscope, reflect the images of the witnesses present at the Tilma's unveiling, including that of Juan Diego and the Bishop. Samantala, balita mula sa Catholic News Agency. A century ago, in 1921, there was an attack perpetrated against Our Lady of Guadalupe in the old Basilica in Mexico City, in which the Marian image was protected by a crucifix. November 14 marks the 100th anniversary of the terrible attack against the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe. Father Eduardo Chavez, 
told CNA, A bomb exploded inside the basilica. The damages were the steps of the altar, the brass candlesticks, and the sacred image of our crucified Lord. The explosion bent the crucifix, which is now known as Santo Cristo del Atentado, or Holy Christ of the Attack. Sa lakas ng bomba, bumalugtot ang krusipiho, subalit ang banal na imahe ng Our Lady of Guadalupe ni hindi nagasgasan. In this sense, he explained, quote, When trying to destroy the image, they tried to destroy the church, and they could not do so because this comes from God. End of quote. Sa katapusan, this story ends with Diego and Bernardino staying in the bishop's home for some time until the shrine was built for Our Lady. When it was completed, Some traditions state that when Jago moved there as a caretaker for the rest of his life, Bishop Sumaraga, a few days after witnessing the unfurling of the image, wrote a letter to Hernan Cortes saying, I want to dedicate my cathedral to the Immaculate Conception because it was during that feast that God and His Blessed Mother deigned to shower the land you won with great favor, end quote. This seems to be an implicit confirmation of the events that had just taken place. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception is on December 8th, and the first apparition took place on December 9th. Although the events were not on the same day, the connection still is to be recognized When Juan Diego died in 1548, the Codex Escalada was made from early 50s to 60s in honor of his death and the apparitions. A cult surrounding the Guadalupian apparitions formed very rapidly, and the credibility of the original apparitions can be affirmed by how well known it was during and after the mid-1500s. By the 17th century, the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe was recognized everywhere, with new churches being made, books written, and copies of the image being painted and sent across the world. The original event was only four days, yet its effects have lasted for centuries. God is good. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Yeah.